How is it going, happy peeps? It is your boy DVD again. Wow, I know it's been a while since I did one of these. It's been crazy. It's been crazy. It's been it's been mad. It's, it's been a roller coaster. <laughs> Considering last night's game, I won't get. I'll come to that now. Just to touch up on what has been happening lately. Um, let's start with the Sheffield United game. So before they went into international break, we were third in the table. Um, played. Okay, if I could put it that way. In fact, no, it's not sugarcoating. In fact, we played shit. Played a shit game. Um, but came up with a 1 0 win now. We haven't played a good 90 minutes, not even 70 minutes once this season. And we were lucky to come away with the win. So I popped Sheffield United. Difficult ground. Again, we lost. Yes, we know we can say there was a VAR call with a tug on Socrates, but let's be honest, we were first poor again. Um, Una's come under a lot of fire since then. Crystal Palace over the weekend, again, got his squad selection correct. Um, however, again, this was marked by the Granit Xhaka incident, which is what I want to touch on actually, first and foremost. So, Granit Xhaka gets subbed, cups his hand to his ear, he makes a gesture to the crowd, he says, fuck off, takes his shirt off and he storms down the tunnel. Now, Let's start with Granit Xhaka. Here we have a player who, number one, isn't an Arsenal favourite at the moment right now. He's come under a lot of criticism. His performances doesn't even warrant him to be in the starting lineup, let alone the captain. So, of course, Una Emery goes and makes him the club captain. This doesn't sit too well with the, with the fans. He then gets pulled off against Aston Villa. He gets pulled off against Sheffield United. This again, in turn, sparks loud cheers, sarcastic cheers from the crowd. Since then, Granit Jack has been abused on social media. Um, his wife's been abused as well. I don't agree much with that. So you can understand the outpouring. Now, where I don't agree with is the whole gesture to the crowd. Number one, you're the club captain. Number two, the fans pay, season ticket holders pay week in, week out to see you. So for him to react like that, I mean, I've been an Arsenal fan since 1998. I've seen captains like Tony Adams. I've seen Patrick Vieira. I've seen Thierry Henry. All were Arsenal club captains and done it in a dignified way. Henry left for Barcelona. The next day he made a video saying thank you to the Arsenal fans. Now to go from that to end up with a William Gallas to then end up with Robin and Percy. Don't get me wrong, I agree, I understand why Van Percy left, but he's not a favourite around the Arsenal. Cesc Fabregas, who again was rumoured to be injured, then he turned, didn't show up for the, he didn't show up for the last game against Fulham at one year, ended up at the Grand Prix. Look at Lauren Koscielny, another one. Now, a recent club captains lately have been a fucking joke, to be honest, and this one doesn't, doesn't um, help the situation anyway. Let's start in the beginning of the season. We've already had shit club captains over the years. For Una Emery, number one, to make it the fucking popular popularity contest by allowing the players to choose the captain. That already spells trouble for me. And already that doesn't put him in good stead with the fans. So, that goes tits up where they have a situation like Sunday and then all of a sudden... We hear uh, he's, he's not doing too well, he's a bit emotional, he might go for counselling. Listen, shut the fuck up. These fans have backed you since last year. Let's start in the beginning of the season against Tottenham Hotspur. He gives a penalty away um, in the first half, which forces us to go 2-0 no down. It's international break, he does an interview, he's like, oh, uh, what, no one's talking about the mistakes on the strikers. Are you serious? Are you serious, Granite? These strikers wouldn't, if it wasn't for these strikers, we wouldn't have been top place last year. If it wasn't for those strikers, we wouldn't have even seen the Europa League final. So for him to come out and say that, for me personally, he's done out here. I don't want to see him. Now, coupled with that, we've also got the Mesut Ozil situation. We have got a team who can't create anything. All season, we haven't been creating anything. We've got three of the most deadliest front runners in the Premier League. We've got, like I said, we've got Aubameyang, who's two of the most feared strikers. We've also got Nicolas Pepe. Who, if you don't count Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, they are the only players that got more than 20 goals and assists. However, Pepe 
has been struggling throughout the whole season. They are oh, so isolated up front. Now, our manager's job is to find the balance. What has been his main downfall this season? I feel it's going to cost him. Number one, I think Granit Xhaka is going to cost him his job in May. If he even sees May, which I will get to later. The other thing is, which has been his main issue, is he's too pragmatic. He keeps on chopping and changing. Now, for me personally, if you are a year and five months into the job, you should know your first 11. Number two, he keeps chopping and changing every time at a stage where it looks like there is something happening here. There is something happening with Arsenal. Maybe this is going right. Then he makes a change to fuck everything up all of a sudden. Last night, I think, is Liverpool was a case of point, which I'll come to in a minute, which I'll come to in a bit. He doesn't know his best 11. That spells problems for me. He doesn't know his best midfield. How is your team supposed to build cohesion amongst themselves and build understanding with one another on the pitch if you keep chopping and changing? It's like you're going to work and every day there's a new person sitting next to you. How are you supposed to build understanding? I think Unai Emery has to shelter most of the blame for that. I think he needs to take the blame for the Granit Xhaka incident and to top it all off afterwards, he comes out and says he's in a bit of a catch-22 because if he strips Xhaka of the captaincy, which I feel he should, Xhaka was never fit to be captain in my, my opinion. He's too arrogant in my... And even the fact that he hasn't come out and publicly apologized to the crowd, to the Arsenal fans, that already says he's arrogant. So, number one, the fact that he has said that if he strips Xhaka of the captaincy armband, there's going to be a player revolt. Hold on. Are you not the manager? What is your job to make big, bold and decisions? Now, what I've said I've seen about this manager is, he's afraid to make bold decisions, number one. I see week in and week out this season, Socrates and David Luiz have been catching on shit and starting week in, week out. However, I don't see him... Um, Taking out Kolasinac and bringing on Tierney. Tierney's first start came against Crystal Palace on the weekend. When Tierney has been fit for how long? What is the point in begging Scotland not to pick Tierney if you're going to play him in Europa League Cup games? It doesn't make sense. I see week in week out Xhaka catching on shit. However, he's in the team, but we have one of the best defensive midfielders in the World Cup in Torreira sitting on the bench. Now, I see week in and week out this team is star for creativity. But one of the most creative players in the league is sitting on the bench and has been frozen out. Now let's get to last night. Let's change it up again. Yes, we considered five goals that I've added our Achilles heel ever since has been the defence. And the defence was shocking. It was shocking. The, the goals we conceded was piss poor. I give that, that and we need to rectify that. But that's why I don't get paid the money that the manager gets paid. However, one thing that stood out for me was Torreira came back in and Ozil came back in. For once, I enjoyed us going forward. And what does he do? I can understand if you want to take off Torreira and Ozil. But then, at that point, shouldn't you be looking at maybe bringing on a Pepe or a Lacazette to kill the game off against Liverpool? Because since Torreira and Ozil came out of the team, I saw a stat earlier, from the 66th to the 94th minute, we only created two chances. Now, come on. Come on, Unai. Unai looks done out here. He looks like a manager that is out of ideas, out of sorts. When Liverpool equalised last night, that told me everything I needed to know. The way that man has conceded defeat, he, he has nothing. I don't think he can do anything more to, to get the best out of us. If he doesn't play Mesut Ozil, over the, on the weekend coming down against Wolves, which is a big game for us. It's a massive game. And if he doesn't play Torreira, then I think he's finished. He is finished. Don't even talk if Granit Xhaka walks out there. Last night, Saka was out on his feet, dead on his feet. He was tired. You could see it. The fact that if you look at Divock Origi, Divock Origi's equalizer in the 94th minute, the one that made it 5-5, it's basic defending. Cav stopped the cross from coming in. Saka was tired, he had nothing, nothing more. The young Liverpool player whoops it in the box, Diva Karigi equalises. Then, penalty shooter can go either way. But again, Kabaya is one of his changes that he made as well to come on. So, I don't know, it's, it's going to be massive this weekend. 
It's going to be big. It's going to be huge. Do I think we can win Wolves? No. We've seen what Wolves did when they went up to um, Manchester City. They're a good counter-attacking side. And frankly, when teams run at us, we've seen what Wolfgang Zaha can do at us hitting us on the break. We fold under pressure. <coughs> then, next week we've got Leicester. <laughs> hey! Do I think we can go to Leicester and win? Fuck no. No ways. We haven't got a, a shot in now. We haven't got a chance in now. What I'm saying is get this manager out now. I've seen rumors of J Jose Mourinho yesterday. I'm not his biggest fan. However, Jose Mourinho is a winner. That's one thing you can say. Jose Mourinho will not take shit from anybody. And from what I've seen on Jose Mourinho when he's spoken in the, in the punditry, from what he said, how he would play Arsenal, I like what he's saying. And number two, anything is better than this manager because I can't see us going anywhere. But... It's a mad thing, it's a long way to go, let's see, but again, we are lucky to be where we are. United are starting to pick up form again. Since Marshall is back, we can see that Rashford scored a screamer last night, so there's a high on confidence as well. And how many times are we going to get away with it? United are how many points behind us now, so let's see, but that's my thoughts on everything. Let me know what you guys think. Like, share, follow, subscribe. That's my rant for the day. It's your boy, David D. And I'm out.